Jesus wept at the funeral of a friend. And he said on that occasion, I am the resurrection and the life. He that believeth in me, though he were dead, yet shall he live. And whosoever liveth and believeth in me shall never die. Think of the hope there is in that statement. Spiritually, you'll never die. You're going to be alive with Christ in heaven forever if you come to him. Are you sure if you died right now, you'd go to heaven? Are you sure that your sins have been forgiven? You say, well, Billy, I'm not sure I'm a sinner. The Bible says all have sinned. Do you know what sin is? It's a breaking of the Ten Commandments. Have you ever broken one of them? If you've ever told one lie, then the Bible says you've broken all of them. And we're all guilty before God. And we're facing judgment and we're facing hell. But in Christ, there's the promise of a new life, forgiveness of sins, a chance to start over. He said, be born again. You can be born again spiritually and start life all over as though you'd never committed a sin if you come to Christ. The deeper and the more basic root of loneliness is isolation from God. And when we're isolated from God, as many of you are, you go to church, you have your name on a church roll, but you really don't know Christ. You don't have his life and his joy and his peace and his sense of forgiveness that he can offer you. Loneliness began actually in the Garden of Eden, in a perfect paradise, when man and woman declared their independence of God. They said, we don't need you, God. We can build this world without you. So they made a terrible choice. They chose to turn away from God. They went their own way, tried to build their world, and sin entered at that beautiful garden. And it was given to the next generation, the next generation, the next, the next, down to you and me. And we all have the disease, and it's a fatal disease. Nobody ever escapes the judgment of the disease of sin. So you, the roots of loneliness were planted in the human soul and we, has been inherited by every inhabitant ever. Because you see, in that garden, God went looking for Adam. He knew where he was, but he went looking for him. He wanted Adam to know where he was. He said, Adam, where are you? And Adam tried to hide, got some fig leaves and sewed them on. He didn't know he was naked till then, but he couldn't hide. Loneliness has never been a respect of persons. The world's greatest artists, writers and composers, kings and queens and carpenters and plumbers and everybody have felt this terrible thing called loneliness. In John 13, it tells about the Last Supper and it tells about the betrayal of Judas. And the scripture says he went out and it was night. No one ever went away from Jesus but what it was night. Perhaps there was a time that you knew the fellowship of God's people and you had peace with God. But you've backslidden, you've gone away, you've turned away. You've fallen aside. There was a time when you knew Christ. You felt you knew him. There was a time when you felt you meant business with God, but now your heart has grown cold and hard towards spiritual things. You've been pulled away by others and other things and other gods and other pleasures that you know to be wrong. And certainly you no longer have fellowship with Christ. And there's no loneliness quite so bitter as the loneliness of a backslidden Christian who claims with his mouth that he knows Christ, but deep in his heart he knows he doesn't. How many of you are straddling the fence trying to put one foot in God's kingdom and one foot in the world's kingdom. Sin makes us lonely because it separates us from God. And it was never in God's intention for you to be lonely. 